These are 10 of the best Chinese stocks right now in 2024. They've beat the market and combined are worth $2.4 trillion this year. In this video, we're covering all of them from the smallest to the biggest money makers to save the best until the end. Starting with number 10, Bank of China. Bank of China trades over the counter as B-A-C-H-Y. Right now it has a market cap of $41 billion and it trades at its 52 week highs. These are up more than 50% from their 52 week lows. Bank of China is the fourth biggest bank in the world by total assets. It was publicly listed in China and Hong Kong in 2006. In that time for shareholders, its stock price hasn't done much, but it does pay over a 6% dividend yield today. Their valuations look quite good, although the company is trading at the high end of its sales in the last 10 years. Right now, a GF value comes in at only $7.70 for the company. Why is this the case? A lot of this has to do with the stock's lack of performance in its past and the fear for the Chinese property market going forward. There are pretty muted expectations on this business in the future. That could mean this is right or it could spell opportunity. It's up to you to dig in and learn more. All 10 Chinese companies we're looking at today are market leaders. They're deeply entrenched, high-quality businesses that make a lot of money. With big investors like Michael Burry and David Tepper buying at multi-year lows, Chinese stocks could be a big investment right now. Remember though, this video isn't financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Use common sense and do what's right for you. Now at number 9, we have China Construction Bank. China Construction Bank is a $180 billion market cap that trades under stock ticker CICHY. It's currently just 20 cents below its 52-week highs, and it's rebounded quite a bit from its 52-week lows, up more than 50%. It's in a very similar situation to the Bank of China, and it's the third biggest bank in the world by total assets. China Construction Bank hasn't performed that well as a stock in the past decade, although the company does pay a huge 7% dividend yield today. China Construction Bank is very similar to Bank of China when we look at their valuations. They're also trading at the high end of their sales in the past decade. The company looks good on an earnings base but with the potential property contagion in China, it looks like a GF value says the company's overvalued by as much as 46% today. PDD Holdings, or Pinduoduo, is number 8 on our list with a $199 billion market cap. It trades just $4 below its 52-week highs, and it's more than doubled from its 52-week lows in the last year alone. Pinduoduo is owned by two super investors today who both added in the most recent quarter, Rob Vinal and David Tepper. The company is one of the fastest growing e-commerce businesses in China, and it also owns Timu, one of the fastest growing businesses in the United States. Right now, this high growth company is out above its abilities to produce cash flows. These numbers were very close to its 52 week lows, and with the company's continued growth, things have really taken off from a valuation perspective. There's a lot of future growth embedded in these stock prices, which is why a GF value comes and at $176 per share. That's $20 above today's stock price. This means PDD may be slightly undervalued. China Mobile comes in at number 7 on our list. It's not only the largest telecom company in China, it's the biggest telecom company in the world. More than 60% of China's wireless market uses the firm, and the company was delisted from the United States back in 2022. At that time, the company switched its primary listing to Hong Kong. They have both Class A and Class H shares. Eight shares have been listed since 2000, and in that time, their stock prices ebbed and flowed with sentiment around China. They peaked at their all-time highs back in 2007, and they've been cut in half from there, though today the company does pay a huge 6% dividend yield. That's a recurring theme around some of these mainland Chinese businesses. They have very high dividends. With a run-up in the last few years, today it looks like China Mobile is trading out ahead of most of its values to produce free cash flows. They're just slightly ahead of their gram value. There's a wide gap in coverage for this stock after its US delisting. Still, a GF value today only comes in at around $44 per share, which is almost $25 below its current stock price. China Mobile may be overvalued. After its delisting, no super investors own the business, but it was briefly owned by Howard Marks and Lee Ainsley back in 2017 and 2019. Agricultural Bank of China is number 6 on our list, and it's the second largest bank in the world by total assets. The Chinese banking sector has very few but very large banks that have tended to trade together in the last couple of decades. Since 2013, Agricultural Bank of China is down 22%. Right now, a 7.35% dividend yield does help make up for some of this. Its valuation metrics look very similar to the other two Chinese banks we've covered so far. A GF value is very similar to the other companies we've looked at as well. It looks like Agricultural Bank of China may be overvalued by as much as 50% today. 
Now at number five, we have one of the most controversial stocks in the entire market. It's Alibaba, which today is a $222 billion cloud and e-commerce giant. The company trades $14 above its 52-week lows after a recent run-up. Today, Alibaba has seen a resurgence among value investors, with five of them adding in the most recent quarter. Today, Alibaba is the top position from both Michael Burry and David Tepper. Alibaba was brought top of mind for super investors after the late great Charlie Munger added a big position both personally and through the Daily Journal. Right now, Alibaba has one of the top shareholder yields of any big tech company. With a new 3.24% dividend and strong share buybacks, they have a market-beating 6.79% shareholder yield today. Since Charlie Munger first bought into the company, its stock price is down by more than two-thirds. Right now, Alibaba trades just below its grand price, and it looks very strong compared to how it was valued in the past for its high growth and its abilities to produce cash flows. When we put these together, it looks like a GF value is around $99 per share, which is $18 above their current stock price. Alibaba may be undervalued by as much as 17%. The fourth stock on our list is a company Warren Buffett has had some history with in the past. It's PetroChina. PetroChina is China's biggest oil and natural gas producer, and it's also a company that was delisted back in 2022. PetroChina today is a $247 billion company that trades at its 52-week highs. From its lows at the end of 2020, the company is up more than four times. With a big increase in its stock price, they also pay a huge 6.36% dividend yield today. Free cash flows, not earnings, are most important for oil companies, so they're coming in just below their projected free cash flows and at the high end of where they've traded for their sales in the past 10 years. With Buffett's history in the business, he bought in at a discount to its intrinsic value back in the early 2000s and sold his entire position by the third quarter of 2007, right before the global financial crisis. Third on our list is the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, which is the biggest bank in the world by total assets. It's China's largest bank by scale, lending share, and deposits. Today, the company pays a nearly 7% dividend yield, but its stock price is pretty similar to its peers. It's down 6% overall in the last decade. Its valuations are also pretty similar to the other big four banks. Again, with a lack of performance in the past decade and the ongoing real estate crisis in China, it looks like the company may be overvalued by as much as 49%. It's probably best to wait and see on these unless you're a real expert in Chinese banking. Mao Tai, the world's largest liquor company, is second on our list. Its flagship product, 53 Degree Fei Tian Mao Tai, is known as China's national drink. It's been consumed during many high-profile historical and political events. The company has remarkable pricing power, a premium high-quality product, and unparalleled brand strength. Mao Tai has been a long-term compounder since it was listed back in 2001. In this time, the company was both owned by Li Lu and Monish Prabrai, though it's likely both don't hold it today. Right now, Mao Tai is trading just below its historical sales and right at a DCF valuation. Still, given the company's strengths, it looks like it may be undervalued by as much as 28% today. If you want an even faster way to screen, check this out. Get investing research that actually works. Our process beats the market. It's backed by real portfolios and grounded in principles from value investors Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch. Our proprietary fair value tool quickly values companies to help you filter stocks. Join our exclusive investing community and submit requests tailored to your investing goals. The cost? Just $1.21 per day. That's less than a coffee. Yet this small investment in your financial future can lead to gains that translate to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars more in your pocket. If you need a new investing tool and aren't using this, you're already paying for it. Start a 7-day free trial now. The top stock on our list is the top internet company in China. It's Tencent. Tencent has an incredible history and it's one of the best venture capital investments of all time. Right now, Tencent trades for $488 billion and it's just $3 below its 52-week highs. Tencent runs China's largest social media super app, WeChat. It's also the world's largest video game company and one of the largest shareholders in leading tech companies like Meituan, JD, DD, Snapchat, PDD, Kaishu, Epic Games, and Supercell. In China, it's virtually impossible to go more than a day without using one of its products. No super investors own Tencent's US listed shares, but this was a small position from Tweedy Brown and Thomas Russo. Through Tencent's biggest shareholder, Naspers or Process, Rob Vanal holds a position in the company, and Charlie Munger himself bought their Hong Kong listed shares through the Daily Journal Corporation. 
Tencent pays a modest dividend yield, and they've grown their common dividends for 15 years in a row. In 2023, they issued a special dividend, which is why their dividend growth is negative. When we put their buybacks and their dividends together, today they have a 2.68% shareholder yield. Right now, Tencent's valuations look somewhat split. They're trading way below their historical multiples and well below their projected free cash flow growth, but it looks like they're trading above their abilities to generate cash flows today. From its highs back in 2021, the company is still down 50%. Tencent holds a lot of stock investments that can skew their earnings from quarter to quarter. That's part of the reason a GF value is only around $40 per share. What companies do you want me to look at more in depth? Let me know in the comments below. To learn about more market opportunities, watch the next video and check out our investing tools.